So good morning, Year 6. We're going to go through our worded questions today. Unlike the previous video, I will be giving you the question. You can then pause the video to have a go at the question yourself and then restart the video to have the answer given to you. And then I will model the solution in case you found it a bit tricky. So this is question one. You'll find these all on the PDF on uh, Purple Mash if you want to print them off and have a look at them. So we're going to start with this one, which is about Jack, who's bought himself a bicycle. He had £400 and he spent 35% of that on his bicycle. So it says, how much did Jack spend on his bike? So have a go now at seeing if you can solve it. Pause the video, restart when you're ready to go through the answer. OK, so the answer you should have is £140. If you've got £140, well done. And you can fast forward to question two. If you didn't get £140, just keep watching and I'll explain how I got to that answer. So we know that our 100% is 400 pounds then we can work on oh, my bars aren't very neat our 10% and 10% of 400 which is this bit here the 10% which is 1/10 which we know is the same as 10% is this 400 divided by, actually we should make that a bit longer so you can see, our 400 divided by 10, which means it is 40. However, in the question, it talks about 35%. So let's find 30% first. So 30 will be these three, won't it? So it'll be three of these, one, two, three, three times 10%, which is the same as three times 40 pounds equals 120 pounds. That's the 30, but we need 35%. If we know 10% over here, we know 10% equals 40 pounds. We can find 5%. We can find half of one of these 10% by halving the 10% figure. So we divide that by two to halve. We can do the same here, dividing that. So 20 is 5%. And then we merely have to add that to our 120 to get 140, which you should have as your answer. So our next one is question two. And question two is about Chloe and Denise, who bought some identical T-shirts from the same shop. But uh, Denise bought it on Monday. Uh, sorry, Chloe bought hers on Monday and she got 15% off. And Chloe bought hers on Friday and got actually 20% uh, off. Chloe paid 35 pence more. So we have to try and look at going to have a go at question two. So it's about Chloe and Denise, who each bought the identical t-shirts, but on different days of the week, when one day there was 15% off, later in the week there was 20% off. Um, so Chloe, who bought hers first, paid an extra 35 pence. And we need to work out the original price of the t-shirt. At first sight, it looks a bit tricky, but have a go for yourself and see if you can get to the answer. And then put the video back on when you're ready to move on. I'll give you the answer and then we'll go through the, uh, the process to get that answer. Okay, so I don't know how you did, but the answer would be seven pounds. If you didn't get seven pounds, please keep looking at this. If you did get seven pounds, you can fast forward to question three. So when we're looking at this, we're looking at one paid 15% less because it says 15% off the original price and the other one paid 20% and if we take one away from the other we can see that we've got 5% one paid 5% more than the other 
But if we look carefully, we see the only figure we're giving is 35 pence. And that's how much more Chloe paid than Denise. So 5%, the difference between the percentage off they got, that 5% is that 35 pence. Now, if I know 5% of a number and I want to get to the original price, remember our original is always that big 100%. So that's my 100%. And if I know 5%, I know this little bit here. So I've got to think about how many 5% make 100%. And quite simply, remember, 5% is 5 out of 100. To get to the 100%, I need 100 out of 100. How many times 5 makes 100? You're right, it's 20. So 5% times 20 will give my 100%. And we know that the 5% is 35. So 35 times 20, so times 2 equals 70 make that 10 times bigger because we're talking about 20 not 2 it's 700 that's 700 pence but we would call that normally seven pounds question three is in two parts it asks first of all 30 percent of 60 is and then the second bit is 30 percent of something is 60. so pause the video See if you can come up with some answers to these and then restart the video. Okay, the answer to question A is 18 and to part B is 200. If you got those right, please forward to question four. If you didn't, watch on for how you could have tackled this. So, if we have... Our whole 100% of this figure is 60. And then we're going to work on our 10%. So we've got our 10%. If we know 10%, we're talking about 1 tenth, which is 10%, which is this divided by 10. So we know this bit here is going to be the same as this divided by 10, which will be 6. But then it wasn't 10%, it was 30%. So we're talking about three of these, aren't we? That's the 30%. That will be 30%. So 3 times 6 equals 18. So the 6 for our 10% times the 3 to make 30% will give us the 18. Now, the second part of this is a little bit trickier. The second part is a bit trickier. We're going to start again with our bar. I'm going to, that's my 100%. But this is the bit we don't know. That's the bit we're trying to find out. But what we do know, we're given some information and we know that already of that, we know that this amount, this 30%, so if you imagine these being our 10%, which are 10 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you've got 10 of them. This bit, the 30%, the three together, is 60. So if we know that 30% is 60, what can we do to find one tenth, one of the whole, the 10%? So if we know that 30% is 60, we know that 10% is going to be that divided by, you're right, divided by 3. So we're going to divide this by 3 and we will get 20. So 10% is the same as 20. That's 10%. So we've got to times that by 10 to get to 
to the 100%. And so our answer is 200. Question four, 20% of Megan's number is 64. What is 50% of Megan's number? Have a little go, then pause. Question four, 20% of Megan's number is 64. What is 50% of Megan's number? Pause the video, have a go, and then unpause to see the answer. Okay, so question four, the answer should be 160. If you got 160, you can move on to question five. If you didn't, have a look at how I arrived at that figure. So I'm going to start with my bar again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's my ten bar of ten. And but I don't know all of it, do I? I want to know 50%. That's the bit I want to know. At the moment, I know 20%. I know that 20%. Okay, and 20% I know is 64 because it says so in the question. Now to find 50%, the easiest way for me to work this out is to divide my 20% to find 10%. So if I've got 20%, I can divide that by 2, which also means I can divide the number I know is 20% by 2. So 10% is going to be equal to half of this. Half of 20% will be 10%. So half of 64 will be, yes, 32. And then it says, what's 50%? Well, if I know 10%, I can multiply by to get 50%. Multiply by 5 will give me 50%. So I can do the same here. I can multiply by 5 to find the answer. So 32 times 5, 2 times 5, carry the 1, 5 times, uh, 3 times 5 is 15, and 1 is 16, 160. So you should have the answer for 160 for this 50% of her number. Question 5 is about Emily making some snack mixture. She has 15% of raisins, 25% banana chips, and the rest is peanuts. The snack mixture as a whole is 250 grams. So we need to find out how many grams of peanuts she needs, she needs to make the mix. So pause the video, have a little go for yourself, and then unpause the video for the answer and the worked example. So the answer you should have had on this occasion is 150. So let's work out the example together. If you didn't get 150, you have got 150, you can move on to question six. So we know that she's got 15% and 25%. So 15% is our raisins, 25% are banana chips, which total uh, 40%. So we've got 40%. So we're trying to find the peanuts. Now, if the peanuts is the rest of the mixture and the whole mixture is going to be the 100%, we know that actually we're looking for whatever 60% is. Now, how much is our whole on this one? Our whole is what the mixture is in total. So the mixture in total is 250 grams. So we're looking to find out what 60% of 250 grams will be. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what we're looking for. It's all of that. That's what we're total thing we're looking for is the 60% to find out how much weight that is. Now to do that, the easiest way is to find 10% first. Finding 10% and then multiplying by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to get our 60%. So we're going to find 10% first. And 10%, as we've said before, a 10% is like a tenth, so we divide by 10. So 250 divided by 10 is 25. And 25 times six, because we want 60%, don't we? We want six, we're going to times it by six. Six times five is 30, carry the three. 
6 twos are 12, 13, 14, 15 is 150. But remember our unit of measure we're using this time, grams. So it's 150 grams. Question six is about these trainers. We know we paid £45 and the original price was £60. We just need to know what was the percentage reduction. So have a go and then unpause the video when you want to go through the answer. So they were reduced by 25%. If you got that right, please go on to question seven. If you didn't, watch to how I worked it out. So I started with... I know it's £60 and I know we paid £45. So if I take that away, I'm going to find out what I actually paid. So I paid £15. Now I need to work out what £15 is as a fraction of 60. So I can start with, I can divide by five. So fives into that go three. And fives into that go 12. So we divided by five three times, divided by five again. Because remember, whatever we do to the bottom, so divided by five, do to the top. But I can see again, because I know my times tables, that actually I can do more. I can actually divide that by three, and that gives me one. And I can divide that by three, and that gives me four. And I know that when I have four here, a quarter, that's a quarter, is the same as 25%. Now, it might mean that you don't remember exactly that a quarter is the same as 25%. But if you always remember that a percentage is a fraction out of 100, we can actually work it out. Because we can say, right, I've got a quarter, but I need to make it a fraction where it's 100 what do I multiply 4 by to get 100? I multiply by 25. And remember, with equivalent fractions, whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 1 times 25 will give me 25. And then that will be percent because it's out of 100. So it's still 25%. Question 8 is about Liam and his uh, survey of 55 people. So have a little look. Have a go for yourself. Pause the video while you do it, and then put the video back on. Question seven is about the children on holiday. So we had 10% of children went to Wales, 25% uh, went to Scotland, and then we need to find out how many more went to Scotland than Wales. So have a little think about it for yourself and then turn the video back on when you want to go through the answer. So the correct answer should be 30. You can have a look at the difference between these two. We've got 15 is the difference between these two, isn't it? And it's, it's the many more. So we're looking for the many more. So the difference is... 15%. So if we think about 200 being a 100%, 200 being a 100%, and we're looking for 15%, which is, ooh, that's the 10%, and that would be the 5%, wouldn't it? That half. To find 10% of a number, we, you're right, divide by 10. We've done a lot of this now. So that would be 20. And to find 5%, it's half of that. And it would be, therefore, 10. And so, therefore, the 15%, the difference between how many went to Wales and how many went to Scotland, would equate to 30. Oh, I nearly wrote percent there. Would equate to 30. OK, so Liam cannot be correct and he can't be correct because you can't have half a person. So let's work this through together. It says that there are 55 people in his survey and he says that exactly 10% are left handed. Now, we know to find 10%, we divide 
by 10. But 55 divided by 10, if you think of our tens and units and then our decimal point and our tenths and hundredths, if we divided by 10, we would have 5.5, that's five and a half, and you can't have a half a person. So he can't be correct by saying exactly 10% of the people are left-handed because that would mean you'd had half a person and you can't do that. It's about the cat sleeps for 12 hours each day, which is 50% of its life. And then it asks you to find out if a koala sleeps for 18 hours a day, what percentage of its life is spent asleep. Have a go for yourself and then put the video back on when you're ready for the answer. OK, so the answer will be 75%. So one of the things we must remember is how many hours are in a day. So... For the cat, we've got 12 hours out of 24, which is the same as 1 over 2. If you divide both sides by 12, which is a half, and a half we know is 50%. So we're looking at the same sort of thing for our koala, but our koala doesn't sleep for 12 a day. Our koala sleeps for 18 out of 24. And again, we're going to divide to work out. So here, oh sorry, I've got a division by 12, wasn't it? Up here, we're not going to divide by 12 because 12 doesn't go into 18, but I think about six is due because I know my times table. So if we divide by six, we get three over, and divide by six on the bottom as well. And we get three over four, three quarters. Now I know, because we've been looking at a lot of percentages, that three quarters is the same as 75%. But if you're not sure and you can't remember these different ones that are the common ones that we know, the link between the uh, fractions and the percentages, you can always work it out by remembering that we need an equivalent fraction where the bottom figure is, yes, 100, because percent means out of 100. So what would I do here? What do I multiply by here to get 100? And I have to do the same to the top. So four times what gives me 100? 4 times 25 gives me 100. So 3 times 25 will give me the 75. And that is the same as the 75%. So if you can't do it this way, you can still work it out by no remembering that percent means out of 100. Question 10 is about Amina who's asking 60 children to choose their favourite flavour of jelly. And it says, what percentage of the 60 children chose orange? Have a look for yourself. And then... Put the video back on when you're ready for the answer. So the correct answer to question 10 is 25%. If you got that answer, please go on to question 11. If you didn't, wait and I will go through the answer with you. So we're looking at the number of people who chose orange, and that was 15 people. Out of the total, 60 chose orange. And again, like we did before, we can actually use our knowledge of fractions and percentages. So if I divide 15 by 3, 3's into 15 go 5, and then 3's into 60, remember whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do it up to the numerator and the denominator. We need to divide by 3 and we get 20. Oh, well I can look at that note, I can put 5 into both of those. So if I then divide by 5, I get 1 there. And I get four there. So when I've got that, it's a quarter. And I remember that a quarter is the same as 25%. Question 11. Quite a bit of a tricky question, this one. So do have a go, but then watch the video if you're unsure of how to work it out. 20% of the children in a sports club play tennis. 25% of those children who play tennis also play rounders. And we're given the figure that eight children play both of those games. But then the question is, how many children are there in the sports club altogether? Have a bit of a go and then restart the video when you're ready for the answer. OK, so the answer is 160. OK, it's a bit of a tricky one. So let's watch this carefully about how we can work it out. We start with our bar 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to work in my hundred bar being broken into ten again, just because that helps me. So I've got my hundred percent, and that's what we're trying to work out: how many children in the club in total. At the moment, I know twenty percent. I know that that twenty percent they play tennis, but I know that of those twenty percent. So I'm going to put another one here, another bar here. Of those 20%, 25% play tennis. Now, I know that 25% is like a quarter. So it's about putting that into four sections, four sections for that 20%. So we know this is 20%, but it says that we want that 20% it's only a quarter of those of that only a quarter of those play both and we know that that quarter relates to eight so think about what percentage this is if that's 20 percent that whole this bit here is going to be yes 10 percent and can you see the 20 percent was split into four sections so fours into 20 go five so the little bit we do know is the 5%. Eight children is the same as 5%. How many fives go in to make my 100? Now, you could do lots of lines to find all your 5% and count them up. Or you could just use your maths knowledge to go, how many fives make 100? It's 20 fives make 100. And do 20 times the number we know is 5% times 8 to make our 100%. So, and 20 times 8, which is like 2 times 8 and make 10 times bigger, is 160. So our whole, all of the children in the sports club, is 160. Here we are, question 12, our final question of the day. So pause, have a little go for yourself and then put back on when you want to go through the answer. Okay, so the answer is 35%. And let's see how we worked that out. So the model's made from 20 cubes. And it says, what percentage of the cubes in the model is black? Now we know the model is made of 20 cubes in total. So I can just count up the cubes that are black. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of 20 are black. And I know, because I've got a fraction here, that my fraction to make a percentage has to be out of 100 to make my percent. So what do I do to 20 to get 100? I multiply by five. So if I did that to the bottom, to the denominator, I have to do it to my numerator to keep it an equivalent fraction. So 7 times 5 is 35. 35 over 100 is the same as 35%. Because percent means out of 100, and that's 35 out of 100. Well done. Some of those were quite tricky questions this morning. I hope you got some of them that you were able to do confidently after this week's work of percentages. Please let us know on the blog if you need any more help.